What's going on guys, Matthew Monas here and welcome to the end of 2018. And this brings me to the best laptops you can buy right now. These are the ones that I consistently recommend to people on a daily basis who ask me questions on what laptop they should get. Let's start off with the best budget gaming laptop. And that definitely goes to the Lenovo, Lenovo, the Lenovo Y530. This is a complete redesign from the previous year. And I think Lenovo did a fantastic job. It's clean, it has a nice look to it. It still has a gaming vibe, but at the same time it looks respectable enough that you can use it in a business environment. I love the size of this thing. When gaming laptops get too heavy, it makes it troublesome to carry it around. But they were able to do this around five pounds, making it a great option for students. The port situation is nice and clean. On the back, you have all the cable spots to place your cables, which doesn't give you this really erratic look when it's sitting on your desk. It runs cool, which is significantly important. It has a good keyboard, and most importantly, it does a good job when it comes to performance. Now, when it comes to mid-range gaming laptops, it really came down to two specific ones. Throughout the entire year, I was mostly telling people to buy the Predator Helios 300 because I felt it offered the best value, or the HP Omen 15. It really depended on the time you were looking for a laptop and what the market was selling these laptops for. Both of these laptops have a GTX 1060 and play games comfortably at 1080p with settings set to high. The Omen had a nice 144 hertz display with good color accuracy and same with the Omen 15. Now things have changed a little bit towards the end of the year because you can finally get the Y730 and the Y30 with the 1060, but it really comes down to what deals and sales these companies are having. Now when it comes to thick laptops, this was a very difficult category. The Alienware was usually my best pick in previous years, but this year, Acer again shocked us with the Predator Helios 500. This is a thick laptop, and if you want a desktop replacement, I definitely think you should look at this one. This one offers a lot of value for the price point. I remember one time this thing was selling for $1,600 with a GTX 1070. It's thick enough that the cooling is adequate. You can get the i9 version of this and not worry about it overheating, unlike the Alienware counterpart. It has tons of ports to hook all of your stuff up to. The only thing that might turn you off again is the design. And if it does, my runner up would be the Omen 17. Now when it comes to convertible laptops, there's a ton to choose from, but I think if you're looking for like the best bang for your buck and a unique experience, you gotta look at the Yoga C930. This thing was exceptional when it was first announced because it had this built-in sound bar at the top. No matter what position the laptop was in, you would always be facing sound. The sound bar sounds great and envelops your head, giving you a nice immersive experience. And it was something unique in a market of a lot of traditional and typical convertible laptops that just look and felt the same. Now the other cool thing about this device was the fact that it had a pen built in to the laptop. Think of the Galaxy Note 9, but a lot of other manufacturers who are building laptops are making them stick them on the side of the laptop using a magnet or using a holster, which is fine, but it's not as convenient as being able to just insert it and forget about it. Now, if you need a little bit more power, my next suggestion is the HP Spectre X360. It is an amazing laptop, and they just released it with a dedicated graphics card. So not only are you getting a beautiful convertible, but you're also getting the performance to go with it. Now, when it comes to Ultrabooks, there's three specific ones I wanna talk about. The premium affordable one is definitely the HP Envy. This is something you can pick up for under $1,000. It is a great device for a student who wants to save a little bit of money but still wants a premium product. It has everything you need with a respectable screen, a good keyboard, all the ports for connecting to peripherals. The only thing it's kind of missing is USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3. It has USB Type-C, it just doesn't have Thunderbolt 3. Next up was the premium Ultrabook category, and it was a tough decision because there's three really great ones. One of them that I really loved a lot was the Surface Laptop. If you're looking for something with amazing battery life, this is the one to look at. You get a beautiful three by two aspect ratio display with great color accuracy, a very unique keyboard with a fantastic typing experience. The only thing I can't like it for is the fact that you don't get USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3, so it's not very future-proof, but if you don't care about that, this is probably one of the best Ultrabooks you can buy. Now, if you want a lot more value for the money, you gotta take a look at the Huawei MateBook X Pro and the Razer Blade Stealth 2019. I literally use the MateBook X Pro on a consistent basis. This thing just came out of nowhere and pretty much shocked the entire tech industry. It pretty much built a laptop that was meant to work first, but still had enough pep 
to do things that required the extra horsepower. Again, three by two aspect ratio, gorgeous color accuracy. You have front facing firing speakers, which sound fantastic. A beautiful keyboard that is very comfortable to type on. It's light, it's portable, and it's just a great experience. Now, I did find the MateBook X Pro would get a little bit hot under full load. So if that's something you're gonna be doing, consistently placing your Ultrabook under full load, then I would take a look at the Stealth. Pretty much the exact same specs as the MateBook X Pro. It's a little bit smaller. You don't get the three by two, but what you do get is a more powerful MX150 and a better cooling solution. Hands down, this is probably one of the most powerful Ultrabooks you're ever gonna own. Now let's talk about laptops for content creators. This was a category that was consistently dominated by the Dell XPS 15, but this year, there's a new leader in town, and that goes to the Lenovo X1 Extreme. I've always wanted a ThinkPad with a dedicated GPU, and we finally have it here. Not only are you getting the superior build quality of a ThinkPad, you're getting the amazing keyboard. Hands down, on a laptop, the ThinkPad line has the best keyboards you're gonna use. There's no other competition out there that can beat it. Not only do you get a very simple but sleek, attractive design, you have all the ports you need to do all of your work, Windows Hello and the facial recognition and fingerprint sensor, SD card slot, everything you need to get your work done. It does run a little bit hot, but not hot enough for me to be too concerned, but it's more than powerful enough with the 1050 Ti Max-Q to do all of your work with the 4K display. Now let's talk about premium gaming laptops. This was a very interesting category. You'd expect something like the Alienware to be on there, even the new M15, but again, Dell just didn't do a good job this year with their laptops. Previous years, they were the leaders, but this year they're falling behind because of heat management. I can't recommend the M15, but the laptop that I can consistently recommend going forward is the Razer Blade 15. This had a rough start. There was some overheating issues. They released a few BIOS updates. Now it's one of the most solid premium gaming laptops you can buy. You can spec with the GTX 1070, a 4K display, so if you're a gamer, content creator second, the perfect system for that type of situation. It just does such a good job with heat management. Unlike other laptops, which tend to get too hot than thermal throttles, what this does first is be proactive. It will power throttle the CPU so you still get good performance, but you don't ever have to worry about your CPU getting too hot. And let's say if you do want to push that CPU a little bit more, you can go ahead, put it on gaming, mode and it will bump up the boost speeds a little bit higher more consistently. Now I do want to mention the MSI GS65. This is the P65 but it's pretty much the same laptop. This is also a good option if you want something around four pounds instead of four and a half pounds. The build quality is not as good but the performance is still fantastic. So if you want to save a few bucks, not buy the Razer Blade 15, you can still do a great job with the MSI GS65. So I think that pretty much wraps up the best laptops of 2018. Oh, I want to give an honorable mention to the MacBook Pro. If you're doing content creation, that's pretty much a great option as well, especially if you're using things like Final Cut and of course any Mac related software. I also want to give another honorable mention to the Surface Book 2. I used this a lot in the beginning of 2018. I, used to, I actually love this laptop, but I had to stop using it for one specific reason. I edit 4K video and because of that, after you have a lot of things on the timeline, the U-Series CPU just couldn't handle it. Now, if you don't edit 4K video like me, or if you edit 10K video, or 10K, 1080p footage, this laptop will be able to handle it. Paired with the GTX 1060, you can game on it, it's gonna offer you great performance, and again, because it's a U-Series CPU, you're gonna get insane battery life. So that pretty much wraps this up. These are my top picks of 2018. I wanna hear your top picks in the comments below. I'm looking forward to 2019, a lot of laptops, it's going to be announced at CES with RTX graphics, slimmer form factors, hopefully better cooling, and guess what? I'm going to bring you all those reviews right here on this channel. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.